Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Guys, it's one thing to say, I, I feel like God's telling me to do something. Maybe he's telling you to stop and go help your neighbor or, or whatever it is you feel he's impressing on you to do. You know. But it's when, not that you just hear that voice, but you obey the voice that the blessings come. You can hear about tithing and go, that was a great message, but I ain't tithing. And then you say, well, how come I don't get no blessings? You kind of miss the hear and obey part. You know, the do. What does James say? Don't just be a hearer of the word, be a what? A doer. We went over this on a Friday night at our family night. It's not about just hearing about the things of the Lord. It's being a doer of the things. If I say to you, Jesus said, love one another. And you go, that was a great message, preacher. You said we were supposed to love one another. That's good. Jesus said that. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, I hate that guy. Get out of my way, you know. You start hating on, you know, whatever, your leaders or your, you, you, I mean, I, I, I'm constantly wrestling with the road workers, but <laughs> I'm praying. <laughs> Love them all. Sometimes I drive by going, bless you, bless you, bless you. You'll work really slow, but bless you too. I mean, I've never seen a road project take this long. You know, it just, it gets me frustrated. You haven't been driving in California. No. <laughs> I couldn't take, she goes, I haven't been driving California lately. I'd die if I was there. But it, this is bad enough. I mean, I, I, this, what would take on the mainland like a, a month has taken, what, four and a half years? I mean, you can stretch it out so long. You just, I had to keep practicing my Christianity. Bless you, road worker. Bless you too, and you, and you holding the shovel doing nothing, and you doing, and you standing there holding nothing, telling him to hold the shovel to do nothing. I mean, bless all you guys. Now, if I tell you love those, like Jesus says to, but you hear it, but you don't love. Do you see the problem? With hearing these words, but not applying them, not obeying them. It doesn't mean anything. There's going to be some that he, he's going to say in Matthew 24, depart from me, you accursed you workers of iniquity. And they're going to answer similar to what we're going to say. When do we see you hungry? When do we see you thirsty? And he's going to say, when you didn't do it to the least of my brethren, you didn't do it to me. I mean, he, he's given us all opportunity to do what he commands. He gives us the chance. And he gives us the chance to see the fruit of doing it with cool things that he does when he opens those windows of heaven and pours out those blessings and little pieces of paper come to you and you're like, I can pay the bill. But you know what else I got to do? I can tithe. Because it's not the end of the story, it's just the middle. You keep tithing, he keeps doing things. You keep, you keep honoring him, he keeps doing more things. And that's how, when people say, how come it happens for you all the time? Do you think I just do this once a week? Like I'm like into God once a week. Once a week I stand up for God. I'm like all into him. Rest of the week live like the devil. No. This is hear and obey on a daily basis. Why? Because I don't know what day he's coming back. It could be any minute. And what does it say? Whoever has that hope fixed on him purifies himself. It keeps my heart right. I mean, sometimes I, I, I'm tempted to sin and the Holy Spirit just does this one little whisper. <coughs> I could send Jesus right now. You want to be doing that when I, you know, send him? Ah, no. All right. You know, do you know how many times that's rescued me from sin? The idea that the Lord could return. Remember this, Luke. This is for you. And, and, and Robbie and Daniel and all the young men. Trust me, this is a lifesaver. If you remember that the Lord, and gals, you can use it too. That the Lord could come and, and you know, like right when you're in your most 
weakest place you feel like you're being tempted to sin, just, re just let the Holy Spirit remind you what I'm saying right now. Because this is from His Spirit. That His Spirit is calling to the church. I can have the trump blow any second. Be dressed in readiness. When you get sucked into sin, you're not dressed in readiness. It says those that will be in sin will shrink away in shame at his coming. I mean, if you're in the middle of sinning and the Lord Trump goes, and it's a twinkle of changing everybody, and you're backslidden, how's that going to work out? You ever seen that movie Left Behind? Yeah. <laughs> that scared me, man. I was like, I don't want to be doing that. I want to be ready. Re I mean, ready. And uh, that's what this message is. Paul was writing to the church at Corinth going, guys, we're going to all be changed, but it could be so quick. Not all of us are going to die. Why does he preach that to them? So they'll be ready. Dressed and ready. Now, a church, a whole church, a, a whole if all of you this week would stay ready for the coming of the Lord, how effective would we be for shining for the Lord this week? I mean, seriously. All, everyone here goes, I'm going to be ready. He can come any minute. I'm going to have my heart right with him. Would it change our week at all in this community? Would it change our witness to this community? Would people look at us and, you know, you're, the stuff we would usually stress about, we'd be like, I'm not stressing. <laughs> I'm reminded of Pastor Chuck Smith one time. One of the, one of the pastors was telling a story. He was with Pastor Chuck uh, Greg Laurie, some of you may have heard of him, does the Harvest Crusades. When he was a young man, he was with Chuck, and they pulled into the Calvary Chapel uh, Costa Mesa's parking lot, and Chuck had got a new car, not brand new, new to him, okay? So it's all used car, but it was in pretty good shape. And he was all happy, you know, we got the new car, and Greg was riding with it, and they, they pulled into the lot, and they took, you know, Chuck, here he is, he's the head pastor, and he doesn't take the spot close to the, to the door. He goes and parks down the way so he can leave room for everyone else. So he parks like, you know, down the, the, the lot over there. And then someone pulls in and they, they open their door and, and it swings right into Chuck's, I mean new to him, not new, but right into the door. Ping! You know, nice, you know, the, the little door, door nipple dunker, you know. And Greg is going, oh, Chuck's going to blow his fuse. <laughs> and he's a young guy in the Lord. Hey, he's looking at Pastor Chuck. What's he going to do? And Chuck opens the door, and he gets out, and he closes the door, and he looks at it, and he's got a nice chip of paint gone and a nice deep dimple in the door. And he looks at Greg, and Greg's looking at him thinking, now what, let's, let's see what he Because Greg's thinking, I'd go postal on that guy. We just got this car. You know, I was with him when he went and picked it up, and... You know what Chuck did? He looked down, he looked at Greg, he goes, it's all going to burn. And he walked in and preached. It's all going to burn. It's just stuff. Peter said it in his epistle. Since, since all these things are to be burnt up, what kind of people ought we to be in holiness and godly conduct? All this stuff is going to burn. He didn't, even, he didn't even get a rise. So it's going to burn. Let's go. We got work of the Lord to do spoke volumes to that young man. I, I know this story because he related it. And, it. and it touched me. I went, you know, that's really the attitude I should have about stuff. The older I get in the Lord, the, it's kind of weird. I, I feel like the stuff of this world, it used to mean so much to me. And now I think it's, it's all passing. And most of it's falling apart quickly. Like proving the second law of thermodynamics. Everything goes from order to disorder. I want to add a little addendum. In a hurry. You know, especially if it's technology or a car or, you know, it, it seems like everything's falling apart on me. So it makes me think, I'm not into the perishable anymore. I want to store up treasure that's imperishable. I want to look forward to a body that's incorruptible, immortal. I want to have a focus that's a little bit long run with a healthy perspective on eternity so that the stuff that I deal with down here, I deal with with the right perspective. I keep it in perspective like Pastor Chuck. Yeah, it's all going to burn. 
that's not what life's about. It's not really going to change. And he didn't let it change him. Because have you ever seen guys that get changed by one chip? One ding? I mean, they were all happy, cranking their music, pulled into the parking lot, everything's all good. And one little tink, and that's it, man. The day is ruined. Ah! They go crazy. And, and it's not just for a moment they go crazy. They go crazy all day. Everybody, I got to tell everybody, that stupid jerk opened his car and ding my, hi, what the, you know, that's my new, doesn't he know, ah, and then he, he leaves that guy and then he sees another friend, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me, and they repeat the whole thing, some guys can repeat like 50 times on one ding, <laughs> ruin their life, right? Yeah, just gross. The ding, it's like a fish. It's a fish story. The thing gets bigger and bigger. It's a giant this big. You go look and it's a chip of paint like this big. But man, the stuff when when we focus on the temporal, it screws up our thinking. It makes us people not really fun to be around. I'm here to tell you, we need to keep an eternal perspective, and the eternal perspective is the Lord is going to come. Not all of us are going to die. But we're all going to be changed, Paul said. You saw that, right? If I had time, I'd take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, start like at verse 13, go all the way to 5, verse 11. If you, that's extra credit, by the way, for you note takers. Where Paul talks about how we're going to be changed. Gives some of the, you know, more of the details. Everyone likes the details of this story. You can read that for 1 Corinthians 4, 13 through 511, that passage. That'll give you a little more insight about the coming of this day. Don't let it overtake you like a thief, though. Be ready. Be dressed in readiness. Just remember, the Lord's coming. Don't let anything sidetrack you. There's just too much in this world, like competing for our affection, and we need to just say, Lord, give me the right perspective. Let me keep my eyes on you. Let me remember you're going to change me. Anyone else besides me looking forward to this change? Now, Lord, if you could just punctuate my sermon with the blast of a trump right now and come through those clouds, you guys wouldn't be able to stand me for eternity. You'd go, I told you, I told you get ready. Wasn't I just preaching that? You guys would be like, shut up, Izzy. You've been saying that forever. You know? <laughs> I was joking with Kai Noah about that before the service. What if, what if the Lord did come right now to end the service? How many other pastors do you think the Holy Spirit would inspire to say the same thing? We'd be all up in heaven going, I said it! No, I said it! No, I, I was just <laughs> preaching it! Me too! It would be like a choir, you know? We'd have to go, that was the Holy Spirit. All right, all right, let's quit bragging. It's the Lord, you know? It would be a nice way to end this. It, I always think that would be the best sermon to end on. I mean, in, in my whole career, if the Lord could come Right when I get done telling you, be ready. I don't know when, but be ready. It could be any minute. And then he just, just for fun, goes, I'll work with that, and blows the trump. And I mean, one time I was preaching about Jonah, and I was talking about Jonah. Can you picture in your mind a whale coming up and, bleh, you know, because it said in Hebrew he was, he, um, the word vomited, projectile vomit is the, the closest to English. Can you picture Whale pops up, Jonah comes out onto the beach. And right when I said that, right behind me, behind that rock, a whale came out full breach and slammed on the water. Right when I said it. And I was like, oh, yeah, we worked on that. Good timing, Lord. <laughs> I couldn't live it down. It was like, I can't believe it. Oh, really, a whale? And it jumped again. Aaron took a picture. It's on our website. The whale, that very whale. Right then in the video jumped right when they said, I go, Lord, you are so cool. You know? Now, if you want to make this sermon really have some, some real, mm, you know, punchline, just blow the trump now, Lord, and everyone will know I'm, what I'm telling you is true. But even if he doesn't blow the trump right now, should you be ready for the rest of the day? Should you be ready for the rest of this week, this month? Should you be ready at any time that he could come? I, I'm here to say soberly in the spirit, wake up if you're not ready. If you're already ready, just keep remembering your toil is not in vain. 
you're going to get a reward. For you that are already ready, this is just a good reminder. Stay busy. Continue doing what you are doing. Don't sweat it, okay? And you'll be fine. For those of you who are not ready, your spirit's going, oh, oh I don't like this topic. Could he go to something else? <laughs> that tells me your heart is not ready for the coming of the Lord. You need to get right. And hopefully your spirit is able to hear today, this is a good day to get ready. Because we don't know what day or hour. It could be any minute, and you wouldn't be ready. And you're not going to have time to repent. It, when twinkle of eye speed goes, that's faster than a snap. We're gone, man. All of us will be caught up. You'll be left here. And you'll be going, oh, man, I should have done what that preacher said. I should have got ready. And by the way, I don't recommend the, the, you know, the alternate plan. Some guys are like, it's okay. After the rapture, I'll just get martyred for the faith. You know, because it says the martyrs will be saved by the, by the giving of their lives. If you won't live for Jesus now, what makes you think you'll die for him then? That's my retort to you that are lazy spiritually and don't want to get right now. Wake up, man. Get right now. Today is the day of salvation. Today's a good day to get right. Don't be thinking, yeah, it's okay. After the rapture, everything goes downhill. Then I'll know God is real, and then I'll get right. Come on. If you can't get right when the, when the getting right is good, right, Herb? This is the good time. Do it now. Don't be waiting till later. That's food. That's, that's only the devil would twist, you know, our thinking to go down that, that trail. That's wrong thinking. The Spirit says today is the acceptable day of salvation. Today is the right day to repent. Today is the right day to get your heart right and let God purify your heart so you're ready. And today, for those of you that are already walking good in the Lord, today's a good day to remind you you're not toiling in vain. All that you do, Jesus is going to reward you. He's going to say, well done. Good job. Good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest, he's going to say. I can't wait for those words. That's going to be a great day. When he says, come on. Good job. Let's go. Enter into my rest. Ah. <sighs> That's what we had to look forward to. Now, next week, we're going to go into 1 Corinthians 16, the last chapter of this, of this glorious book. And he's covered so much heavy theology in this. Chapter 15 was a theological, power-packed, heavyweight chapter of the Bible. But the next chapter has one that I hope Luke, the, Luke Luke's going to be maybe leaving us soon, but I hope he's here next week because it's, the, it's the, the one-liner that says, Be alert. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men, it says. Be strong. That's Paul's words when he ends this word to, to the church at Corinth. Man up, boys. It's time to be men of faith. Be strong. You know, it's, it's a weird culture we're living in. You, you almost like get in trouble for saying, hey, be strong in your faith. Man up. You know, manning up doesn't mean you're wimpy about your faith. You, you, you can be strong in faith as a man. Our culture is like kind of kicking that. I'm not into that. And you'll see it next week when I preach chapter 16. So if you would, do me a favor, read ahead. Read the last chapter of this book. Now that you've seen all that Paul has explained, and see if you see anything like him tying it all into a nice little package bow with a ribbon on top and saying, here, guys, this is, the, this is the word for you guys. And, and, and it's, just a, it's just one of the words, because then he goes and has to write 2 Corinthians a few years later, because they have even more growth and more questions and more stuff to cover. But we'll get to that later. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you so much for your holy scriptures. Thank you so much for the Apostle Paul that would write these things to the church at Corinth. Lord, the words that you had him in, inspired by your Holy Spirit for them, Lord, I can see so much apply for us in the days we live in. So help us, Lord. Help us to know these mysteries that we're not all going to sleep, but we're all going to be changed. Let us be ready, Lord, for that trump to sound, that we might be just dressed in readiness, able to go into your presence in glory to, to be swallowed up, our perishable by that imperishable, our, our mortal by immortality, Lord, our corruption by incorruption. We can't wait, Lord, for the upgrade that you have for us. 
I look forward to that now as we get ready to, to meet your son. Lord, keep us with our eyes on that hope. Let that hope purify us, your bride, as we wait for his return. We ask it in his precious name. In Christ's name we pray these things. And everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.